There are places in the world that are better not to visit without special training. For example, a tiger cage or the top of a mountain. But sometimes, no amount of preparation can help. Some places are simply deadly to anyone without protection. And one of these is the Mariana Trench. In one of the previous videos, I explained what would happen to a steel ball at such a colossal depth. It's time to send a person there. In today's video, you're going to learn what would happen to the human body at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. I'm going to show you how serious and irreversible the damage would be, and how many seconds a person could spend at the deepest point before it would be life-threatening. As usual, I'll start with the basics. To get to the Mariana Trench, you need to go to the western region of the Pacific Ocean, to the Mariana Islands. The deepest point of the Mariana Trench is 10,994 meters, or 36,069 feet. This is in the Challenger Deep. This depth isn't considered suitable for life. It's dark, relatively cold, and there's not enough oxygen. But the most important thing is the pressure. In the Challenger Deep, this amounts to 108.6 megapascals. This is more than 1,072 times the normal atmospheric pressure at sea level. Even the water here is denser than normal seawater. It seems that such pressure would destroy any living organism. But the Mariana Trench is still inhabited. There are polychaete worms, some mollusks, deep-sea fish, sea cucumbers, and smaller life forms. Not a single fish that dwells at shallower depths or any other underwater creature would survive if it suddenly found itself in the Challenger Deep. But what if you put a person there? Of course, people have already descended to this depth on various underwater vehicles. In fact, director James Cameron did it alone. But what about diving without the protection of the bathyscaphes? Would it be possible to just open the hatch and go outside once the machine reached the bottom of the Mariana Trench? The answer is pretty obvious. No. To exit the bathyscaphe into the depths, you'd need to open the entrance hatch but the immense pressure would prevent you from doing so, even if you put all your strength into it. To achieve this, you'd need to equalize the pressure, carefully open the hatch to allow water to flow in. It's possible that the stream of water coming through the gap would simply cut you in half. After some time, the pressure inside and outside would become equal. The hatch would open, but for you, it wouldn't matter. In general, Taking one step and being at a depth of 11 kilometers or 7 miles isn't possible. So, you'd have to use your imagination. Let's say that humanity had already invented teleportation and was actively using it. So actively that it would maybe even send some madman to the Mariana Trench. The pressure inside the person and the pressure outside when they reached this depth would be too different. The pressure difference would lead to flattening. For example, if you boil a little water in an aluminum jar and then put it in cold liquid, the jar shrinks dramatically. This is due to external pressure. A similar fate would await the human body. No modern diving suit would help. But the compression wouldn't occur instantly. It would all depend on the amount of time you spent at that depth. Let's say the trip lasted only a nanosecond, or one billionth of a second. Then you were immediately returned to the surface. It may seem that such rapid movement wouldn't be felt at all. You wouldn't even have time to blink. Most likely that's true, except for a slight tingling sensation. Where would that come from? Teleportation is movement in space. If an object has mass, then its rapid movement from one point to another must occur with a large expenditure of energy for acceleration. But a nanosecond is a very small amount of time. Pressure wouldn't play a special role here. Because of the deceleration during teleportation, a large amount of energy would be transferred to the water. This would push the water away from your body. Therefore, when you return to land, 
you would feel a slight tingling sensation. Only this could testify that you just made a trip to the Mariana Trench. Let's raise the stakes. What would happen if you spent one thousandth of a second at the bottom? This is still faster than the blink of an eye. Most likely, a person wouldn't be able to notice their teleportation. However, they would definitely feel it. This time, they would be there long enough for the external pressure to lead to a strong spasm. One moment, you'd be standing in a teleporter, and a second later, you'd feel a strong pain throughout your whole body. It wouldn't cause internal or external damage. The body wouldn't be deformed. You'd be alive. Even longer, one hundredth of a second at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. This would be long enough to make a terrible change. This time, the spasm would be stronger. A person could die from the pain of the shock. Despite the fact that the person would appear healthy, their organs would be damaged. This is about how the impact of firearms on the human body works, causing hydrostatic shock. This controversial concept has not been confirmed in practice, but so far no one has arranged teleportation to such depths either. Now, one tenth of a second. What normally seems like a short moment would feel like an eternity in the Mariana Trench, not because time moves differently there, but because for such a period, the pressure would definitely have enough time to kill a person. Surely, when you teleported, you'd automatically hold your breath. After all, you'd be going for a dive. But this would be a mistake. Because of the difference in pressure, the lungs would instantly be destroyed. Most likely, they would simply be torn apart. The other organs wouldn't escape this fate either. The person would return to the surface already dead, but would still look like a person. What about one second? You may have time to feel the temperature of the water, but it's unlikely that you'd be able to realize what had happened. This would be enough time for the Mariana Trench to literally crush a person completely. After 30 seconds at the bottom, the body would not only be damaged, but also have time to fill up with water. The enormous pressure would force water inside. All of the blood vessels would have burst by then, and the skin color would be pinkish. The person would look like a doll made of meat and bones, or a character from a horror movie. It's unlikely that anyone would be happy with such a finale. After 30 seconds at the bottom, a person could not be returned to the surface. What if we didn't use teleportation? Perhaps a person would be luckier if they gradually descended to the bottom. Maybe they could get used to the changes, but a depth of 11 kilometers or 7 miles is too long to hold your breath. Plus, the pressure, which would only increase as you dove, approximately every 10 meters or 30 feet. Maybe we could reach the bottom quickly. The sharp descent would have the same effect as teleportation. In addition, there are other dangers along the way from the surface to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. For example, predatory fish. Now, let's return to the inhabitants of the Mariana Trench of whom I spoke at the beginning. How are they still alive? These organisms, as a rule, don't have rigid bone support, and this characteristic saves their lives. Pressure in the Mariana Trench turns glass and wood to powder, whereas on the surface, the same creatures can turn into jelly. To survive at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deep-sea inhabitants have adapted to the conditions. Most likely, this occurred simultaneously with the movement of the lithosphere plates. As the trench became deeper, all of the ancestors of sea cucumbers adapted. Those that didn't simply died out. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click on the bell to receive timely notifications of new, interesting videos that are waiting for you ahead.